Right, welcome. Uh, if you couldn't hear, uh, we have a clear winner in the painting challenge, or the painting vote, I should say. Um, and there are quite a few people voted, uh, a lot more people than I expected to vote. And the winner is. Uh, let me just set them up. We have this nature here. And when I bring him into focus, we can see that it is Kenneth Branagh's Harry Potter miniature himself. It is Gildroy Lockhart. I don't know why it won't focus on his face there, but there we are. You can see I was doing a little uh, painting earlier, so I've got a bit of a, a black thumb. But yeah, we're painting uh, we're painting Gildroy Lockhart. Um, the second place was uh, was oops, let's get him in focus. It's this guy, this uh, squig hopper. So we are going to be painting the squig hopper first, as I said, um, as a as a little runner up thing, uh, and then I think in the in the later half of the show we will paint Gildroy Lockhart. Um, so how is everybody? How are how are we chat? Or at least how is Leah? Soon as Leah seems to be the only one possibly that can uh, that can message. If anybody else can message, then uh, you are of course very much welcome to. Uh, very much encouraged. It's Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thanks, Leah. Um, yeah, um, had a pretty relaxed day, and didn't spend anywhere near long enough working on the stream. Uh, rookie mistake. We'll uh, we'll put it down to uh, teething problems. Uh, just had a private message saying that somebody else is good. So whoever that was, it's good to know. Um, okay, so the story with my square coppers, uh, if I can just take you to the square copper there. Um, the story with these guys is that their cloaks and their um, squigs are all different colours because these guys live in caves and uh, if anybody's lived in a cave before you'll know there's not much to do other than stare at walls um, so for fun these guys race their squigs uh, they keep them as pets, they, they use them as, as uh, sort of farm animals and, and harvest mushrooms from them but they also race them and the way that they can tell each squig and each jockey apart is the colour of the um, the robes that they're wearing and the colour of the squig, much like in horse racing. So I've just marked up these guys by the uh, by the hood and by the tail. They're just so uh, I knew for reference when I came to painting them which ones. They uh, they were so I'll uh, I'll stop just showing the miniature now and uh, get round to painting the thing. Let me just move over here and get in shot a bit better. So I had a feeling these guys would win. Um, I know that they're loved by lots of people, um, lots of people who don't play the game and lots of people who do play the game and don't play this army. Uh, there's just something so endearing about the squig. Um, I don't know what it is because I think they're quite ugly little things, but I do like them. Um, and 
I do think there should be some more squigs because I think past these guys and the squig herd I don't think the squigs are all that uh, good or um, entertaining or anything sort of nice I think they're just okay little animals um, there's a really really big um, one of these sorry if I'm constantly fidgeting with the model um, yeah there's a really really big squig that has uh, a goblin or two riding it um, and I think that's a horrible horrible model and it's one of the most expensive models in the army if not the most expensive model and I just I really really don't get it how you can turn these these lovable little creatures into just uh, a horrifying mess um, which is not nice and, and a lot of people seem to like the big one and I don't know if it's um, sort of a thing like oh I like squigs I have to like this one because you do not it's a horrible model and uh, it should be left on the shelf uh, if if my uh, 10 pence is worth anything that is my 10 pence um, just a little uh, a little thing if you weren't here last week uh, if I'm looking down here I'm looking down at the uh, palette that I'm pulling the paints from uh, if I'm obviously I'm looking at you uh, I'm looking at the camera trying to explain things there's some lights that will uh, constantly make me look like a vampire uh, I am working on things I am still achieving things like my laptop being charged enough to stream which I just noticed it isn't so plug that in there sorry if you could hear that beep um, ooh Oh, we've got a, a bot in the chat. Want to become famous and buy followers? Uh, no thanks. I spend too much money on little plastic men to uh, to spend on followers. Not that I would buy followers uh, anyway, but hey ho. I just realised I've moved my camera, and you can now see uh, the corner of the room. How do I Let me move back this way a bit? And it's gone mad. Uh Emma Marie, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Make yourself comfortable. Um I am planning on doing uh Maybe an hour stream, maybe uh, maybe just over. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what people want. Um, if you were watching last week, you'll know that we were uh, we prematurely prematurely ended by the camera battery dying. That's not going to happen this week. Uh, I bought a secondary battery and when this one dies we're ready to just plug it in and uh, plug uh, yeah sorry plug in the uh, the new battery and carry on uh, Lockhart didn't win good Lockhart did win um, regardless of what people are voting now Lockhart did win this squig hopper came second uh, but we're gonna paint lock out second uh, because we want to build it up a little bit more we want uh, after last week I know that a lot of people came later on in the stream so Clover don't worry uh, we are painting lock out today uh, Clover also thanks for the follow 
I know that that happened uh, after the stream last week so I wanted to thank you on stream I was going to send you uh, a message personally but thought no I'll do it on stream I'll give him the same justice um, that everybody else got last week so there you go Apparently you guys can still hear my, oh god now the phone's going crazy, you can still hear my laptop noises so I will close that down, I do apologise. Um, oh why so many things are going wrong this week, it went so well last week. Um, I think because of how nervous I was last week I was more um, determined to get things right so I uh, spent a lot more time prepping whereas today I was just like ah, I'll carry on the same thing as last week and it'll be fine um, obviously it isn't but we move we we'll carry on oh. caught his arm a little bit there which is fine, we'll go over that with the green in a bit. Um, what are we all up to tonight then? Is anybody else painting? Is anybody else um, doing anything? Or just watching me? If you are just watching me, I am uh, sorry for the silences. I did try and add music, but it uh, it didn't didn't want to work. Just watching you and cuddling with the dog. Oh, how how is the dog? Sorry, another thing I missed out. If I'm if I'm looking just off the um, the webcam, then it's uh, it's me looking at chat because uh, I've changed a couple of things from last week. If you saw uh, if you saw the stream last week, it's uh, it's a little different, so I don't have to break my neck to look at uh, at chat anymore. I moved it to be more convenient. Uh, he's good, he's getting a lot less nervous. Oh. Oh, I'm sure he'll be the, uh, the bravest boy around soon. I'm excited for um, the pandemic being over and finally being able to see him. Yeah, the images from Discord, I don't think, do enough justice. Anybody else doing anything tonight? I mean, I'll take it as a no. Maybe that, or you're, you're so engrossed in what you're doing, you're not chatting. <laughs> I know that, uh, that somebody said earlier they were playing Animal Crossing with me in the background. Uh, I've not been on Animal Crossing in a while. Um, since probably, probably about a month after it came out, 
Um, I'm not sure why, because the one on the DS I absolutely loved and I never put it down. And the the one on the Switch I was like, this is exactly the same game. I love it. And then just sort of put it put it down and uh, and never went back to it. I find I do that a lot with my Switch. Uh, if there's a new game that comes out, I'll go, ooh, I'll get that and play it, and then just put down my Switch and, and don't pick it back up again for six months till another game comes out. I think it's partially down to uh, to these guys as to why I don't uh, why I don't play so many video games anymore, which is a good thing because I've spent way too long in front of screens my entire life, uh, hence why I wore glasses for a bit. Those of you who have uh, who know me for a while in chat probably have seen me wearing glasses once or twice. Sorry, just painted up of the um, of the camera there. Bring him back into focus. So here's where we are so far with him. He's got a lovely, um, lovely pink. Uh, robes on. If you are interested, if there are any uh, the painters out there, this really dark bottle is, wait hang on, there we go, is Screamer Pink. Uh, it's a Citadel colour and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous Citadel colour. Uh, so there we are. I'm just painting it on um, out of pretty much out of the pot. It's thinned a little bit on my wet palette, but not a great deal. Um, I do keep sort of dragging it out and, and teasing it a little bit, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's by and large the straight colour. So we're just about there with this cloak, I think. Well, I did say that last week, and then uh, going back to the miniature, I was like, well, I've missed so much. So, so much. Um, I haven't missed quite as much as I thought here. Um, yeah, he's... Uh, He's getting there. I could maybe do the, a bigger brush. I've picked a really small brush. Um, not my smallest, I must say, but far, far from my largest brush. Um, I was watching a video the other day on YouTube that said, don't be afraid to paint with bigger brushes. And I thought, well, I am exactly afraid to paint with bigger brushes. Um, and then his one of his next points said, "It's only paint, and if you make a mistake, you just you go back over it with a different color." And I thought, actually, he's got a point now. Uh, shame I didn't take his advice on board. Actually, this this, uh, this cloak could have been done quite a bit quicker. 
So maybe for Gildroy afterwards, we will uh, we'll paint with a bigger brush. Um, I did I did just grab a brush out of the um, out of the box I keep them in because. I so I didn't know what I was painting until I was painting it really. Uh, and just get in. Just under his legs. In there. Okay. Oh, we got seven seven people watching now. That's more than I expected. So thank you very much, each and every person who's watching. Oh or half watching or not watching at all and just has me logged in and muted don't really care what you do so long as I can see your uh, number in the chat in fact I can show the viewers list and have a look at everybody that's watching so that is pretty cool nice to see some familiar names. It's also nice to see some unfamiliar names in the chat. Um, whether you've just got different uh, Discord names to the ones that I have. Oh, uh, different Discord names. Different Twitch names to the ones that I recognise you by. Or not, but... I am not a number, I am a free man. Yes, sorry. Sorry, Clover. Um, you are all perfectly free human beings. And I can see your names now, so you're not just numbers, I can see who you are. Uh, I can get to know you all a little bit if you uh if you like, if you if you're chatting, if you don't wanna chat, there is a Discord server, which I will link at the end of the stream in the chat, so you can join the Discord server, uh whether you're a painter or whether you're a whatever else hobby you you like to do, I'd we can all be friends. We can all have a chat and a laugh and uh, enjoy Discord together. There is, of course, no need to uh, to join the Discord, but maybe maybe there's some extra surprises if you do join the Discord. Uh, okay, so we're about forty minutes in and. Uh, I do realise that I started the timer early so I think we'll go uh, just for a little bit longer and we'll call a break and you can all go put the kettle on you can all grab something to eat uh, do, what you, do what you would do and I'll come back afterwards and um, uh, we can start on Professor Gildry Lockhart. I hope there's not some major Harry Potter fans in the chat, because I'm not sure if he's a professor or not. Um, someone will be able to correct me, I'm sure. I think this cloak is just about done. And I am... Uh, Serious about it this time. Uh, I could I could cut him up and and get the oh, get the extra bit that I've missed just in there, but nobody's ever going to see it. Um, I'm not all that bothered about it. So yeah, there's his um, his squig to do next. So I'll just put him back on that, so you can all. Have a look. Uh, wash off my brush. And towel on sand I used. Uh, this this paint, which is Citadel's towel on sand, is the colour I will be painting the glorious, glorious squig. 
Um, if any of you are miniature painters out there and you are uh, neat painters, I am not a neat painter when I paint squigs. Uh, I do try, but usually when I'm painting a squig, just colour goes all over their teeth, their eyes, their nostrils, whatever. Um, and sometimes it looks a little messy, in fact, most times it looks a little messy. Um, I do sort of accept that, and I um, included it in the law for the squigs a little bit, um, so that they are painted, because uh, for those of you who don't know, squigs are usually red, um, and these squigs are obviously not red, so uh, it's nice to tell the story for your army, it's nice to sort of bring them to life a bit, you feel a bit more connected to them, I feel. Um, and I think for players, um, I've not managed to play a game yet, because I took lockdown as an opportunity to, to learn the game and stuff. Uh, is that Talan Sand or is it something bright? You know what, we'll go for Talan Sand. Uh, you'll you'll see when I come back. I'll bring in the the full collection of the squigs, or as many as I can to can fit in the the camera. Um, and you'll see how different and how easy to to sort of pick ones out they all are. Now I'm not somebody who uh, names. Um, different units because quite frankly I wouldn't be able to remember names because I can't remember the names of, of, of a lot of people I know so people I don't even speak to have got no chance um, yeah I know, I know that a lot of people do name specific units and specific units do have a name if like this is squig hopper so it's squig hopper that's it it's, it's as simple as whatever the makers of the game choose for it to be called that's what it's going to be called um, I know that some models uh, like the there's a, there's a king of all the goblins and he's called Scragrot the Loon King. Uh, so obviously Scragrot is his name. I will call him Scragrot. I won't just call him Jeff or you know or whatever. Um, but but yeah, I do think it's a, it's a little daft that some people will name units. Or models, or or whatever. There's a um, another another game that Games Workshop make. Uh, who are the the makers of this? And uh, Games Workshop make a game called Blood Bowl, which is uh, um, sort of American football, but with goblins and orcs and and humans and whatever other fantasy creatures you can imagine um, and all those teams have team names and um, to me I, d I think that's ridiculous if you want to name your team then go ahead and name your team Don't. I don't think Games Workshop should be the ones that decide your team name so that takes away from uh, from some of the uh, fun, I think. So we're approaching uh, 50 minutes on the stream. And I think, yeah, like, like I said, when, when we get to that point, I think I did say 40 before, but 
when we, I think when we get to, to 50 minutes we'll have a break have a bit of a chill out and I can have a drink because I realise I'm uh, talking quite a bit I might turn this radiator off in this office as well because it's getting pretty toasty. Hope all of you watching are, are nice and warm and, and cozy and uh, being uh, being sort of homely, I suppose, on this winter night. Or are we still in autumn? I'm not sure. I'm not good with seasons. 26th of November feels like it should be winter. It's cold outside. Most of the leaves are dead, so... Uh, I'm happy for it to be winter. That's another thing I've not spoken about, actually, thinking about that, is um, if I hum, or if I sort of start to sing along to a song, I do apologise. The uh, the Twitch gods will absolutely hate that. Uh, I'm not I'm not looking for any copywritten material to be added to the videos. I'm just somebody who sings, naturally. Uh, when they come. So, yeah. If you find me singing, absolutely feel free to drop me a message, tell me you shut up. Uh, I don't mind. Or ask for a certain song, ask for requests. Like a DJ. That was a joke, don't ask for requests. Okay, so we got this squig nice and browned up. See, there you go, you see? Gone straight over the eye. Um, and onto some of the, um, the lips as well. I will fix the eye. I'm not sure what colour I'm doing the lips yet. Uh, I've avoided it on most of the models. So. I can pick it at a later date. Okay, I'm gonna set this guy uh, here for a bit. Just try and angle him so you can see him a bit better. Bring him into focus, there we go. Right, so I shall wash off my brush and I'll be back. Okay, so we are back. You can hear me twice again. No, you can't. You can't hear me twice. Uh, I can hear me twice though. Um, I had a message in the break saying the uh, the stream is a little too quiet still. So hopefully this has fixed it. Okay, so we are moving on to. Gildroy Lockhart now. Uh, here we are, Clover. Uh, I presume you are one of the people who worked for this miniature. Uh, this is from Knight Models, Harry Potter miniatures game. Um, and Gildroy's a uh, character who has quite a few outfits in the film. Uh, they're all made in the same sort of three-piece suit with the, well, I suppose it's a, almost a four-piece suit, really, um, with the blazer, the waistcoat, and the uh, trousers. Um, I believe that's what makes a, a three-piece suit. Um, obviously, he's got his cape, um, which he has in every outfit as well. Uh, 
yeah, this, sorry, I was just, just looking at the miniature myself there. Um, it's really, really nice sculpt in this uh, in this model. It's the same with with all the knight models uh, miniatures. They just I don't, there's something about knight models that isn't quite right. Uh, you'll notice that I've put in uh, on a citadel base. For those of you who know, uh, the knight models miniatures come on on a cobblestone base. Um, they have a little tab that their feet are attached to that just slots into that base and the tab never really fits right and they never look right so I just cut the tab off and plonked in on a citadel base uh, right and let's get painting uh, as I say he, he has quite a few outfits in the, the film and I've chosen to go with the blue outfit. So we're going to be painting him first with McCrag blue. Um, that is, if there's enough left in the pot, uh, we sure hope there is. Oh, uh, I've got a I've got a reference image of him up just so that I can uh, see what I'm working with. If you are wondering what I'm doing, just shaking up the pot a little bit. Um, it is uh, it is good practice to do so. Uh, no idea why, actually. So if anybody knows why we shake paints, please let me know. Because I've always found it quite odd. Um, I'm under the impression it's something to do with pigment settling. But really, I have no idea. I have no knowledge of art whatsoever. And I do know that we have a couple of painters in the chat. So uh, if you don't let everyone know, I will ask you personally. That sounded like a, a threat. It, it wasn't a threat. I just, I am really curious to know why we shake paints. Right, uh, so that is on the palette now. Uh, I did say I get a bigger brush, so if you can hear them all rattling around there, you can see on the camera here uh, my brush uh, and this this range of my brushes. They are uh, they are very very small brushes, but I think you need small brushes because they minimise mistakes. They make uh, they make controlling the paint a lot easier. Uh, and I did say in the, sort of the sort of first half um, how using a larger brush isn't bad, um, but yeah, for me, smaller brushes. I always think, what's the, what's the smallest brush I can get away with? Ah, clover. Uh, correct. Pigment separates from the acrylic binder and settles to the bottom. There we go. Not as green as I am cabbage looking. Yeah, uh, that's something my uh, my granddad used to say all the time. Oh, it's not as green as these cabbage up in this lot. So uh, there you go. If you take nothing else from the stream, you've taken uh, a saying from an old man, and why paints need to be shaken, or why acrylic paints at least need to be shaken. Uh, I presume with your mention of the acrylic binder that is, is just a rule for acrylic paints. I know that watercolour paints don't need to be shaken because they're just blocks. Um, but thanks for that Clover, thank you. 
and if you've told me a lie, then I shall forever believe it. I just realised I'm painting this entire cape off camera. Um, as you can see here, I've just started on the cape because it's a huge, huge piece of uh, well, a flat. I know, I know it's not flat because of the cape uh, wrinkles and things like that, but it's a relatively large piece of surface area um, that you can just get painted pretty much worry free. Um, I've always thought that uh, painting things with capes is a lot easier than painting something round, like perhaps the squig hopper, uh, well the squig part at least of the squig hopper is. Um, just because you don't have to deal with uh, any any sort of big angles, I do know that obviously there there are angles as you can see. Or as I hope you can see. Yes, you can. Um, yeah, there are there are angles, but you don't have to worry about what they touch because it's just blue. Or oh, it's you know red or green or pink or whatever colour you're painting at the moment. Uh, is my chat working yet? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And your sword next to your name looks pretty cool. Is that is that because you're a moderator in the chat? Is that why you've got a sword? Um, I don't know. Uh, for those who don't know, this is my uh, my second ever stream. So. There's a lot I do not know. Uh, like how to add music properly and how to make sure people can hear me right. Um, they are uh, they are issues I'm working on. Um, I use Twitch Studio to. Um, He's an expert now. I'm not. I'm not an expert now. I'm very far from being an expert. I think I might do a hundred, a hundred streams. I'm still, I still wouldn't be an expert. Um, but as I was saying, I, I used uh, Twitch Studio um, to stream. I don't use OBS or Streamlabs. Um, I use Twitch's own brand. Um, and when I went to get the program that I know you can add music to streams with, uh, I found out it doesn't work with Twitch Studio. So Twitch's own program doesn't work with their own streamer, uh, streaming software, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous, and I thought they would have made it for their own program first and then made it for the stream labs um, or for OBS rather I, d I do understand that more people use OBS so they'd go for that market I guess but whatever it, it, it still seems odd to me You'll see here that I'm still working on the cape. It's a huge, huge cape. Um, never, 
I never really understood it. Um, there's a lot of Harry Potter I don't understand. Doesn't make me like it any less. Um, there's a lot of Doctor Who I don't understand, and Doctor Who is possibly my favourite intellectual property ever. Um, maybe second to Back to the Future. Anyone else have any uh, selections of IPs they'd like to throw into the mix? I know there's going to be some some cult classic. I'm sure Clover, you've probably got uh, some some IP that that you like that I've probably never heard of. Or some form of media that I've never heard of, at least. I'm uh, I'm I'm funny with uh, things that have big fandoms, uh, like uh, Game of Thrones and uh, Walking Dead. Two, two massive, massive TV shows, and I watched them and was not blown away by them, really. You know, like was, uh, Walking Dead, for instance, was just, huh, it's just zombies, and it's alright, I suppose, if you like zombies. Uh, Game of Thrones, however, I watched the first series first series of that and I just and I was like what I like dragons I like sword fights I like uh, you know just the whole sort of fantasy um, setting of Game of Thrones of, of Westeros is it maybe I don't know um, but, but yeah everything should have ticked a box and it just came out kind of flat it was like I don't know it, it, it felt a bit wasted on me um, personally I watched uh, I watched the first episode of the second series and I was like nah this is where I'm finishing it you're going to try and pass Arya Stark off as a boy and teach her how to sword fight or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, like I say, it, it wasn't for me. I'm Walking Dead, I got to uh, Herschel's farm. Uh, I, I won't say what happens at Herschel's farm um, for the benefit of people who haven't seen it. But yeah, uh, d sort of the the ending of that. I was like, mm, all right, cool. I went back to it. Haven't felt any any worse for not going back to it. Is anyone known watching any uh, any big series at the moment? What are, we, what are we watching in chat? I know that the, the Crown is back. Are we watching the Crown or um, whatever else is streaming? We just started watching Parks and Rec. Is that the is that the one that made Chris Pratt famous? Parks and Rec. Um, I've never never seen it myself, obviously. Um, by the fact that I don't know who's in it, but I think I get it confused with uh, "It's Always Sunny." So that's that's the one that made Danny DeVito blow up, isn't it? But now he's everywhere, like a plague. 
Not that I don't like Danny DeVito. No. Yeah, it has Chris Pratt in it. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. It, uh, Chris Pratt is a great actor. I love him. Um, in, uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy as Star-Lord, of course. And he plays Emmett in the Lego movie. And, yeah. He's, he's, he's a funny guy. He's a great guy. But Parks and Rec never grabbed me. Is that on? Is that on Netflix, Leah? I might give it a go. I might hate it. Is, who knows? Big Mouth. Big Mouth was the thing I, I, I found on Netflix. Um, and I know that people go on and on about that. And it's on Prime Video. Oh, okay, well, I've got Prime Video. I might give it a go. But but going back to Big Mouth, yeah, people rave about it. You know, this is the best show on tel on on Netflix, and it's great. It's this, it's that, and I'm like, surely it's not that good. And I put it on one night and did half a series, and then thought mm, I'm gonna have to go to bed. Um, and I woke up, put it back on, watched the rest of series one, and then never went back. Big Mouth is weird. Yeah, Big Big Mouth is very weird. Um, very, very inappropriate comedy. Um, but who doesn't like a bit of inappropriate comedy? I enjoyed the first season, but I haven't enjoyed the rest as much. Yes, yeah, so again, it, a similar story with uh, with that and Game of Thrones. I think I watched the second second series' first episode, and I was like, eh. It, it's it's run its cost. Uh, Will Arnett, um, who plays the uh, the hormone monster of the kid with glasses, he's a fabulous, fabulous voice actor. Love him. Uh, who's also in the Lego Movie. Um, played Lego Batman. And played Lego Batman again in the in the spin-off. Uh, Sure, he's done other things as well, but that's what I can think of. Okay, so that is the cape done. Uh, I believe there's there's a little bit there in between his legs. You can't see it because the shadow of the um, of the thing. Well, the the shadow on, on the screen is much much greater than uh, the shadow in reality. Um, I don't know if that's a, a trick of the light or a trick of the camera or what, but whatever. Now, the image that I'm looking at, his suit is the same colour as um, his cape, and I don't know if I want to go along with that. Yeah, I think I do. Sorry, I'm, um, the, uh, the image is just behind. That's better. Yeah, the image is, no, it was just behind the microphone. Uh, yeah, seeing it, seeing it here is much, it's much better. Okay, so we are going to paint all of his suit. If I knew that, I wouldn't have been so, so neat with it. Uh, his tie. Well, his no, it's a cravat. It's not a tie. His his cravat is also the same colour. So we'll go back in with a smaller brush, like that one from earlier, and we'll paint. Uh, paint it up. I have also realised the inside of his cape is a lighter colour. It's the same kind of colour as his uh, his waistcoat. So we will go back and work out. What is the light colour and what is the darker colour? Uh, but for now, we'll just uh, paint his trousers and his blazer and uh, then we'll grab his 
Let me just grab that as well and change colour. I think he is. Uh, he's possibly one of the most iconic, uh, visually at least, uh, Harry Potter characters. Obviously, after Harry, Hermione, Ron, and Voldemort, uh, the most iconic characters. Um, but I think looks wise, everybody remembers that guy from Chamber of Secrets who had all the fancy suits. Um, and always stood in this pose as well. This is uh, a, a pose he uses quite a lot. The reference image I'm looking at here stood in this pose. Um, and I remember uh, Lego Harry Potter. Um, I, I played a lot, a lot of Lego Harry Potter um, back when that was released and whenever he wasn't walking uh, if he was idle he would he would just stand like this um, I think Kenneth Branagh's performance is excellent in this film um, Shame he only got one uh, one film. I suppose he only got one book, didn't he? So he's only needed for one film. But yeah, it would have been nice to uh, to see him a bit more. I feel like. That. I feel like a ghost. I'm, I keep catching uh, the webcam. The exposure on it is rather odd. I don't know why. When, I, when I'm this far away, it seems fine, but it just heightens it a bit for, for no reason. Um, well, there must be a reason. But Whatever. It's so so fiddly to uh, turn the model holder around and still keep it in frame. What are, you, what are you thinking about this miniature clover? You seemed uh, you seemed excited uh, to see it. Is it living up to your expectations? Yeah, I love Lockhart in the movies. Maybe it's so, so easy in more than one movie. Or is he in just a one? Because I must say, when, when I said uh, Shame he's only in Chamber of Secrets, uh, I've only ever read one of the books. Uh, sorry to all you Harry Potter fans and reading fans out there. Um, but I have only read uh, Philosopher's Stone uh, but I've, even worse I've only seen up to maybe the first challenge in Goblet of Fire the bit where he opens the dragon egg I think that's a, about where my recollection stops um, 
Like I said, I played the games. I played Lego like Harry Potter 1 and Lego like Harry Potter 2. I don't really remember the characters or the story or anything like that. Been a while since I watched them. Might only be in one. But that shows how much. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he does have an impact. He's, he's such a memorable uh, character. I think him and uh, Lupin, Professor Lupin. Um, who's the uh, the werewolf? I love both of those guys. Uh, I I I must also say that the uh, the reason I included only three Harry Potter miniatures is um, because I'd already painted one of them, so I bought, I bought them as a four pack, and I had already painted. Uh, Professor McGonagall, uh, because instantly, I really when I bought them, I was like buying it for Professor McGonagall. Uh, I like Lockhart, obviously. Um, Snape is such an iconic character, as is uh, Dolores Umbridge. But I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't as excited to, to, to receive those uh, miniatures. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have. Uh, Minerva with me. Uh, I'll see if I can post her maybe on the Instagram. Uh, she can be the the first post on the Instagram because I realised the other day that I've I've got one uh, for Mellow Miniatures and have never posted it. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a wasted. Tumbleweed account there. Um, there is a Facebook and a Twitter which just have uh, notifications of when my videos are out. Uh, my videos on the YouTube. I didn't put a notification out for the upload of last week's live stream, which I might do. Um, just see if we can uh, increase the uh, increase the views on it. Uh, if you have watched it already, thank you for that. Uh, but unless you watched it today, you watched the unedited version, and now there is a edited version on there also. Um, oh, those brushes are getting really warm. Take those off there. Okay, so we're gonna move on. I know I said about the the cravat, but I'm gonna move on to the waistcoat as well and the inner of the cape. So I'm gonna give this a real good shake. Uh, what time is it? It's quarter past nine. Okay. We've still got quite a few people in the chat, so thanks for sticking with us. I know that there's, uh, there's been a few technical problems and uh, things like that, so uh, if you didn't see those and you thought the stream was going perfectly, it's not. Oh well, it is now, but it wasn't. Uh, I'm not afraid to to admit that. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for sticking around. Thanks for putting up with me for an hour and twenty six. Or oh, however long you've been watching, I suppose. Um, I did start the stream ten minutes uh, ten minutes before I started speaking. So if you have been watching for an hour and twenty six, you had a nice uh, nice bit of respite before without me. And I must add, if 
for those of you who didn't see the stream, the, the start of the stream, that wasn't any technical issue. That was planned. Just so that we could get some people in. And we could uh, start painting. There's some people watching. Okay, that's, that's the waistcoat. Now, it is a more silvery... Sorry, it is a more, more silvery blue than this. But I... I might revisit it. Um, so there's a reason to stick around. I might make that a YouTube video actually. Revisiting miniatures I've done on stream. Because um, the way I do coloured metallics, uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you at the end. Um, is painting the silver, and then painting the contrast paint on top. Now contrast paint, uh, I think I spoke about a little bit last week, uh, and it's um, it's a, a thinner paint that's still pigmented. Um, and it just goes over the top of something and uh, builds builds a colour on it um, a little more transparent uh, than the standard acrylic paints do don't know why I said that in, uh, in so many takes but there we go Okay, that's. I'm happy with the waistcoat. There's some edges to tidy up afterwards, but hopefully that won't be too much work. Okay, so I'm just trying to look around the venture. It seems this this panel here is the inside, as is the underneath down here, all around this sort of curve. Um, I don't know how well you can see the inside though. Uh, there's this panel that he's doing, and then in between his legs again. Uh, but if that folds around there, probably finishes here. Yeah, it does. It finishes there. It comes back round on itself. Okay, so we'll just define this edge. Uh, th this is uh, something I like doing. If you're doing something that's that's too toned, um, or just painting a, a, a bit where where a colour meets another colour, is just to paint that bit. Uh, paint paint the, the whole thing first, or paint one colour first, and then just paint up to the edge, of course, that you need. Um, and then you don't have to find it again. So you've got your colour, and you, now I can just, when I get a, a small, an even smaller brush, I can go up there with the with the smaller brush up that that panel there. Um, and again with this edge, you just take take a bit of paint out here and just sit it on the model like this. Now I didn't put this this lighter blue on the palette because I didn't want to thin it too much. Uh, so what I did instead was I'll I'll clump it on like this and then just try and spread it out as far as it'll go because um, if, th if I thin it down too much it's just gonna slide off the top of the uh, of the acrylic and it's, it's gonna dry uh, patchy uh, and of course there's the, the old thing of too thin coats I'm an impatient person don't like the idea of too thin coats uh, I don't often paint over the top 
of colors unless I'm painting a, a, a shadow or a, a highlight. Um, I could really do with a command in the chat. Um, maybe it's something I can I can work on where I can just get you guys to type something in and it warns me about the camera being off uh, about the uh, miniature being off. Oh, there we go. The battery has died. So bear with me a second. should be back. Come on, behave yourself. No, you're not going to do it. Oh dear, oh dear. What was I saying about messing up? Come on camera. We know you plugged in. I know you plugged in. What's wrong with you? Okay, so you're filming. Good. Work. No, it's not having it. <sighs> well, I did say we'd be going until half past nine. I didn't want to end with the camera not working. Though it seems that's how we're going to have to end it. So the, the computer knows you're plugged in. Hmm, doesn't want to add it. Okay, well, give me a second. I'll just put that up. So you don't have to uh, in fact what I will do is I'll do this. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so annoyingly uh this secondary battery doesn't want to play. Um that's really uh, as I said, really, really annoying because it did want to play earlier, uh, that is one of the things I did test out. Um, I suppose we are streaming live, this is proof of, uh, of you, you can't always have what you want. I'm sure you've seen uh, live things go wrong before. Uh, yeah, as I say, this is uh, really quite annoying. Um, I have swapped the other battery so the, the dying battery back in uh, that that doesn't want to stream either uh, I've tried pretty much everything I can and without you guys sitting here for too long getting bored and, and leaving I think we may just end it there uh, it is half fast I did say I was going to stream until around half fast uh, yeah I do do apologize for the technical problems um, yeah, uh, as I as I can say, I'm, I'm a new streamer. This is uh, all brand new to me. All teething problems, things I will uh, have worked out, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, so I, 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 I don't know what else to say really. Uh, here we have. You can see how how small the things are I'm painting. Uh, for those who who don't know. There is the mighty Gilderoy Lockhart. Uh, you know, I'll I'll, I'll bring him back. Um, I won't do any more work on him. Given you guys picked to see him painted, I will paint the whole thing head to toe, start to finish, on the live stream uh, next week. Uh, oh, I will carry on painting it next week. I might bring back the Squid Copper. I might 
move on to something completely different. Uh, I do have these uh, these, these models. That's a, a 3D printed zombie that I've got that you could have picked, but you guys didn't. You picked the Gildra Lockhart, so that's what I painted. Uh, okay, so this has been Mellow Miniatures streaming live for the second time. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and good night.